back to 2012 to find a stat line like this. It was Josh Smith, actually, with the amount of points, rebounds, assists, plus yeah, four steals and three blocks. What, what was it on the defensive end uh, tonight from you? What, what was the way of trying to set the tone on that end? Um, just trying to do whatever it takes to help us get off this uh, losing streak. And, uh, but that's always been my game. Um, you know, to be able to play both ends of the floor, hold myself accountable and be there for my teammates. And uh, tonight was, a, um, was an instance where I was able to you know, get some steals, get some blocks, you know, uh, took a couple of charges and you know, just trying to, you know, be the voice and, and also act on action as well on the, on the defensive end. You guys had a certain game plan uh, that worked pretty well against Dame uh, in the playoffs last year. It seemed like you employed it, especially in the second half tonight. What, what's the key there for you uh, and the bigs coming up to helping the guards and, and how do the guards do with the shooter and Caruso specifically? And KCP, should say. Uh, I mean, well, you have to because Dame has, uh, uh, you know, Dame has unlimited uh, range. So you have to be up on screens. Uh, once he crosses half court, he is in his range. Um, so, you know, you have to have everybody up the floor, the guy that's guarding him and the guy that's guarding the pick and roll. Um, there's going to be double drags. There's going to be single drags. There's going to be a lot of things that's going on in early transition. And uh, when you're not, um, a couple instances tonight, he made us pay for it, you know, uh, coming off and letting it go. And when we tried it, when we got it right, we was able to execute it, uh, um, you know, to the best of our ability. Dave? LeBron, to go away from the court for a second, um, Zlatan, the soccer player, said that he believes that famous people and athletes such as yourself shouldn't use their platform to do anything other than what they're good at in their athletic endeavor. As someone who has promoted the idea of more than an athlete and, and trying to empower uh, players to, to, to use their voice to speak on their communities, do you have any response to what he said? Nah, uh, absolutely not. I mean, because at the end of the day, um, you know, I would never uh, shut up about things that's um, that's wrong. Um, I, I preach about my people and I preach about, uh, you know, equality, um, social injustice, racism, um, you know, sy systematic uh, uh, voting, uh, voter suppression, um, things that go on in our community, um, because I was a part of my community at one point and seeing the things that was going on. And I know the you know, what's going on still because I have a group of uh, 300 plus kids at my school that's going through the same thing and they need a, a voice. Um, um, and I'm their voice. I'm their voice. And I use my platform to continue to shed light on everything that may be going on, not only in my community, but around the, uh, you know, this country and around the world. So, um, you know, if, if, if <laughs> there's no reason, uh, well, no, I won't say no reason, but there's no way uh, I will ever just stick to sports because I understand how, um, you know, how this platform and how powerful my voice is. Um, and he can just ask uh, Renee uh, Montgomery, uh, you know, if I would have shut up and just dribbled. Um, seeing that beautiful black woman today, um, you know, be a part of a, a group um, where she's part of an ownership group now with the Atlanta Dream down in Atlanta. And uh, it's funny he say that because I believe in like 2018, he was the same guy who said uh, when he was back in Sweden, talking about the same things um, because his last name wasn't a certain last name that uh, he felt like it was some racism going on when he was out on the pitch. Um, right. He did say that. Right. Yeah. I thought he was, I thought he said that. So um, I speak from a very educated mind. Um, so um, I'm kind of the wrong guy to actually go at because I do my homework. Dan. Well, I can't ask you about anything else now. So, um, <laughs> I, I, along those lines, like when you look around this league and, and you see a new generation of players not growing into their voices, but like coming to the league with them, having them, I'm, I'm curious, how does that make you feel? And if there are there any players in particular whose leadership at a young age really speaks to you? Oh, well, one, it makes me feel, um, I'm proud to be a part of, uh, of a generation where our voices are heard and guys are speaking from an educated, um, you know, mindset. But more importantly, they speak from, a, I think when you speak from your heart, um, it, it rings bells even louder. And we got, um, you know, a lot of guys that speaking from the heart that didn't believe they had a voice at one point in time or, you know, now they're coming into it and they see that they can have a voice and, and, and that their voice really matters. Um, so that, that, that makes me proud. Um and you, you see, uh, you know, guys like, uh, you know, uh, Jalen Brown, um, who's very, you know, obviously he, he's educated beyond his years. And I, and I love the what he stands for um, in our league. 
And you see Pat Mahomes, also a younger guy, and Alvin Kamara, and you know, in the NFL, and those guys speaking about things. They're young, but they speak about things that, you know, they feel like is unjust as well um, in their communities and and, and and whatever that's going on in the whole grand scheme of things. So, um, you know, as athletes, obviously, we've been heard this for a long time to just, you know, just, you know, you should be privileged. You should be, uh, you know, you should be thankful, uh, you know, to, to be able to dribble a ball or run a football or be able to, uh, do it a hundred yard dash or, you know, or be able to, uh, you know, swing a baseball bat and things of that nature. You shouldn't be able to speak about anything else. Um, no matter if it's right or wrong, you should, uh, should just, just do that. Um, but, um, that's not the case. Um, it's not the case anymore. Um, as long as I'm around, um, it won't be the case for a long time. Got time for more, Kyle Goon. Hey, LeBron. Um, just, just on the game tonight, um, I was wondering if you could speak to the impact of Dennis, but also just how much more fun do you guys have when when you guys are are playing connected that way and a little bit closer to being whole as a team? Well, I mean, obviously Dennis gives us an automatic spark. I mean, he's just his energy alone uh, gives us a spark. Um, his competitive nature gives us a spark. And obviously we've been shorthanded as of late. So, you know, to have another body, a fresh body, well, wouldn't say fresh when you're out of the game for, for a week, uh, but – you know, just to have him back in our lineup and have him back in our locker room just means so much to our to our team. So uh, it was big time in that instance, and uh, everybody just rallied around another. Um, you know, tonight being able to you know play well on the defensive end and also on the offensive end as well. Thanks, bro. Is that it? Yeah, All right, appreciate it. Thanks.